Hello my friends, I'm Clover and this is Gas. And today we're solving a numbered room Sudoku by Philip Newman. This was posted originally on uh, December 7th, 2024, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, um, you can see that I'm in a different spot from usual. That's because I am back in the Netherlands for the rest of the winter. So I'm a little bit confused about time zones right now, but I'm pretty sure this is the gas puzzle from the 7th. So let's solve it. This is a numbered room Sudoku. So we have standard Sudoku rules. So we're placing the digits one through nine, once each in each row, each column, and each outlined three by three region. And also there are some numbered rooms clues outside of the grid. So numbered rooms clue, it's a little bit odd to get your head around, but once you understand it, it should become more intuitive. Basically, if you have a numbered rooms clue, you look at the first cell in that row or that column. So for instance, these ones on the right here, the two, three, four, five, we're going to look at the first cell closest to the clue. This eight here, we're going to look at the cell right above it. Four, we're going to look at the cell right to the right of it and so on. So we're looking at the first clue. And that first clue is going to have a digit that tells us where the clued number goes in that row or column. So for example, in this column, we already know that the digit two is in the third position. So we already know we have to put a three there. And we can actually fill out the entire top row of the grid like that. Three is in the fifth position down. And by the way, the positions are always counting from the direction, from the side of the grid where the clues themselves appear. Four is in the seventh position down, five is in the ninth position, six is in the second position, seven is in the fourth position. This is gonna be in the sixth position for eight and nine is in the eighth position. So we can actually go ahead and fill all of those in. The rest of them are gonna take a little more work except for this, um, this five, which has to be in the ninth position, which tells us three is in the fifth position. And I think that's all we get immediately solely using the givens. So now we have to do a little bit more work to continue this one. So let's see, what can we start to place here? So actually four here is in the sixth position. So we can put a six there, it's in the sixth position over. And that tells us that six is in fact in one of these two cells in this region. Those are the only possible positions for six. Three has to be in one of the, oh, five here has to be in the second position. So that's gonna be a two. And then because there's a now a hidden three in this region, there's gonna be a three right there. And the two also places our four in the second position there. And six is going to be in the fourth position. So that gives us a bit to work with. Six has to be in one of these two cells. And let's see, six has to be in one of these two cells. So this is actually a hidden six right here. These are going to be four, seven, eight, and nine, and that can't be a four. Okay. Now let's narrow down some of the other digits that we can place. So this three, that's indexed by this cell. It can't be in cells seven, eight, or nine because there's already a three in that region. So it has to be in one of the earlier cells, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now there are a couple problems here. So first of all, there's an eight in position two. So we're down to one, three, four, five, six. There's also a six right below that cell. So we're down to just one, three, four, five. We also can't do one because that would mean this cell had to contain both a one and a three simultaneously. And we can't do three because that would mean these cells both had to contain three simultaneously. So three is out. And finally, five is out because there's already a three in the fifth column over. So this is gonna be a four, and then we're going to place a three here. And now we know that there is a three in one of these cells. And we're gonna kind of proceed like that to place some of the other digits. So what have we not placed yet? We need to place a seven here. We need to place an eight here. I need to put a four in this region. There's a hidden four right there. One of these guys is gonna be a three. It can't be here because one is not in the third position. So it's definitely in one of those two cells. One of these guys is going to be a two. That might help us with this two clue over here because since we know that one of these cells is a two, we know two is not in position seven, eight, or nine. So we can also eliminate three, four, and six because the two clued cell C is three, four, and six. It's also not a one because that would again require us to put both one and two in this cell. And it can't be a two because that would give us two twos in the row. So that's a five, which places a two right there. Now we have these two and six. So that makes this a two, six pair. And you can see we have a two in this bottom corner, which is actually gonna tell us where the six has to go. And that six luckily is an indexing cell. And so it tells us we need to put an eight right there, which puts an eight into one of these cells. 
Now how about the seven? So the remaining digits in this region are one, seven, eight, and nine. We can't use one or seven for the same reasons I explained over here with the two and three. So that tells us seven is in the eighth or ninth position. The ninth position is already occupied by this five. So the seven must be in the eighth position. And that also eliminates eight from this cell conveniently. We can eliminate eight from elsewhere in this region. That's not gonna be a seven and that's not going to be a nine. And then these are going to be some combo of one, two, four, and nine. Now, the six, is in where, the six is in the position where it belongs, so that's all good. I still need one, three, seven, and nine to finish off this row, and there's already a one in region nine, or a nine in region nine, so nine goes right there. Now, this can't be a one, and it also can't be a seven because there's a two seven positions up already in row three. So that must be a three, which places a two here, and that actually finishes this entire region for us. Here we need one, seven, and eight to finish the region. This three just took care of these three corner marks. We need a one and a two to finish this column. And here we need three, five, seven, and nine. Those can't be sevens, those can't be sevens, or fives, and that's going to be a five and a seven like that. And these are going to be two and six. That's a two, that's a six. And these are going to be one and nine. That's no longer a two, so we can eliminate nine from that cell due to the one nine pair in the column, and that now becomes a two. Now, are there any other clues that I haven't utilized yet? The four is taken care of, the eight is taken care of. I think I've used everything that I have. I think I'm down to classic Sudoku, although I am open to the possibility that I'm wrong. <laughs> like, I, like I suggested, I am in fact very jet lagged, so... I have an A9 pair here, that's going to become a 3 and a 9. These are going to be 1 and 4 to finish the row. Here I need 3, 5, and 8 to finish the region, and because that has a 3 and a 5 in the column, that's now going to be an 8, and that finishes that whole region. Now this is the only position for an 8 in region 8. These digits are going to be 5 and 9. That's a 9, that's a 5, that's a 1, that is a 9. And these digits to finish off the column are going to be one, six, and seven. This isn't a seven, this isn't a six, so that's going to be my six. Now, what do I need here? One, four, and seven. That can't be a one, that can't be a seven to finish off that region. Here I need one, seven, and nine. We can't have a one. I need one, four, and five here. That's a four, a one, seven, four, seven, and one, and we're really just scanning to do classic Sudoku using naked and hidden digits at this point. And we should be just about finished. That's going to be an eight, and then our last digit is this seven. Fantastic. That's how you solve Philip Newman's numbered room Sudoku from December 7th. Hope you enjoyed that one, and I will see you again three days from now.